Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Curiosity Inc., where I am on the road this morning to go look at an estate, a collection. I'm taking the ambulance, and I'm taking it empty, and I'm bringing a checkbook, which means I'm hoping to fill this thing up. Let's hit the road, see what we can find, and hopefully, um, I don't know, get some treasure. Let's go check it out. Been a little while since I've driven the old girl, so hopefully she starts all right. You know I've got a big trip planned when the ambulance makes an appearance. <laughs> Okay, I'm here. I don't think I'll be able to do any video inside the house as this is an estate situation, but I uh, will show you the aftermath. Right now, the back of the car is empty. <laughs> we'll see just how full it is by the end. Maybe it'll be disappointment. Maybe there won't be anything here. I'm gonna go find out. All right, folks. Well, the back of the ambulance is completely full. And what did I get today? Well, the answer's on my wrist. I filled an entire ambulance with vintage watch parts and collectibles and clocks and all kinds of cool stuff. It's gonna take me forever to go through all this stuff. Uh, but I'm certainly gonna show you guys the highlights of it as I go through, uh, but you're not gonna believe what's back there. It's nuts. There's a pig and a poke. I have no idea what I bought. Just boxes and boxes of old watch parts and watches. Hopefully there's some good finds in there. We're gonna find out together. Normally I could just sort through the stuff at the store, but the store is full and we're also showing it because we're trying to sell it right now. Uh, and my garage, well, it's packed full of stuff like BMW Isettas and general store shelving and other stuff that just has to go find a new home. Um, so I'm gonna put a table outside and go through it out here. Ah, <laughs> the things we do, but it'll all start to make sense and all start to come together very soon. It's gonna be a very busy month, but let's start cracking and look at what the uh, treasures are I found. The first thing I have to do is probably get uh, some of the bigger things in um, that I put in here. But what I want to sort through today is these small boxes. And the reason I have to go through this all today is uh, some of this I'm going to want for the store and others, uh, most of the stuff, 90% of the stuff I don't even want. I kind of had to take everything all in one shot, but I have a friend who uh, repairs watches. He's probably going to come by on Tuesday, which is just in a couple days from today and pick everything up that I don't want. Um, so I have a bit of a rush to go through all this and sort through. So let's start bringing boxes out and have a look-see. This one's labeled case openers and I can see already, yes, official Rolex, I believe. Yeah, Rolex Oyster case openers. Those are good. Got a few of those. So those I'll hang on to. Actually, all these tools will probably come in handy, but I'm mainly looking for the brand name stuff to keep. So anything Rolex like this, That's uh, Oyster three quarter. I will now have the ability to pretty much open up any Rolex watch with this. Not that I should, but sometimes you need to. Check your serial numbers, take pictures. So some good watch openers in here. Well, actually lots of good tools. You know what, heck, I should probably hang on to these because I'm gonna need them at some point. All right, first box, I guess that's just a keeper. I also picked up this partially completed remote control plane. It's a really good size too. Hopefully there's enough pieces in here to finish it up. And Melissa's walked up to see what I'm up to. <laughs> so probably not a surprise, I guess, that I came with a car full of stuff. No, not a surprise. Hmm. <laughs> but how happy will we be when we have our garage empty again? No, as soon as it's empty, you come home with a different car. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. This is a really cool clock. It probably came out of a train station or, or something along those lines. It's such a long case, either general store. Um, I have what I believe is the face for it to go inside. I don't have the pen pendulum. Well, there might be a pendulum in there somewhere. It's not 100% complete right now, but I am gonna try and find a way to make this work because it needs to be saved. It's just too darn cool to let something like this sit and not be put back together. Another project for another day, but for now, we saved it. And I'm outside filming, so we have neighbor mowing lawn noises in the background. Uh, but I can see I'm starting to get some watches. This is Seiko, it's a quartz, not overly fancy, but there's all kinds of other cases in here. This is a 1950s Hamilton Electric. These are very collectible. That might even be a, a gold case. So we're gonna go through and see, well, that would have been a nice Seiko uh, chronograph. Movement's not in there, but I have to be careful because a lot of times he's got the movement separate in little cases. 
you know, like it could be here, but dismantled. I, in fact, that is a Seiko movement right there. So I'll keep those together. Old Bulova Accu Quartz. One of the first ones has got little tuning fork on, on it. Pretty good little watches. They make one called the Space View that's very collectible. So that is a Bulova. See, look at this. It looks all fancy on the outside and you just have this little cheap movement on the inside. Still, somebody would probably wear that. So I'll put that in the potential cell pile. There was an entire watch cabinet that I had to take apart. It's actually sitting there, but all the drawers are here. Now I'm gonna go through the drawers and see if there's anything kind of interesting that's lying in here. You know, there's obviously lots of parts and pieces, but is there gonna be a surprise? Some of these are labeled too. That's for a Veljou 32, that's a chronograph. So those are just, you know, tiniest little pieces, but somebody who's working on that, um, on the old chronograph, so it's coming really handy. What I'm hoping for are some more complete watches that I might be able to resell or maybe get pieced back together and ideally something high end. And here's something kind of cool. It's another Accutron early piece. These are pretty collectible. Don't know what that one needs, but there are a whole bunch of um, tuning forks and parts and pieces that go with these watches. Also, kind of notice this guy here. It looks like it's missing the crown, but otherwise that's a nice little chronograph. If I can get it to work, that could be a nice little valuable watch that would look great on display. Now, I do have a watchmaker that can fix these things for me, but a piece like this would be worth investing the money into because uh, repaired, well, it's got some good value. It's current shape, not worth a whole lot, but uh, good working condition, that could be a um, $400 plus watch. So pretty good find. Oh, here's another old one here. And you have to be careful of what names are on them because uh, even a Rolex, sometimes they didn't even use a Rolex name. They had many other trademark names. So uh, Solar, Tudor, I got to be careful. There's a whole bunch of Accutron parts there for the Space View watches. Well, I can keep digging. I found a couple good ones though. Well, at least one. One I'm really happy with so far. And this one says it's an Elgin, but if I look inside this little black watch here, that's a Doxa. Which is a decent quality watch. Some of these are Martiso, and I noticed, where did it go now? I probably set it down already. Um, there is a uh, dismantled Tiso automatic watch. Oh, right here. That's a Tiso automatic that's all in pieces. So decent high-end watch. Um, definitely deserves to, uh, well, I mean, you could sell it for pieces or parts, but still was expensive in its day, and it's better than just getting uh, tossed in with all these other parts. And there we go, a nice, Little case of Tissot Visodate dials and parts and pieces. Put that together with the other Tissot parts. Move on to some of the boxes in here. I can see there's some harmonicas. That's pretty cool. This is a really neat one too. Tremolo harmonica in the box. And a uh, harmonette in Germany. That sounds neat. Well, I'll take this box out and have a look at it. It's not just watches. Well, check this out, harmonette. It's like a little mouth accordion almost, well, a little keyboard. So you blow into it and then you push the keys. Really good shape too. Nice that it has the original package. Looks like I got a whole bunch of harmonicas in here. This is a box pretty well full, a box full of harmonicas. Goliath with the box, all these different, what, uh, CX12. I haven't seen that type before. It looks like it's plastic, chromatic harmonica. But look at them all, boxes and boxes and boxes of them in here. Really, really cool. You probably want to wash them first before you use them, but it's pretty neat. Here are some parts that might be worth keeping. Patek Philippe. And as significant of a watch as they are, even the tiniest little part off of one can be valuable. So those ones will get separated. Many of these other parts are kind of new replacement movements. Um, there's lots of gears. But you got to be careful to look for the right brand name. Parts, more pieces. The right name we've got rolex rolex tudor prince so oh, look pretty much the whole movement is inside here for uh tudor prince well i better check all these but look rolex omega omega um looks like we've got some high-end watch parts which is good news because that means there might be some uh high-end watches maybe i can find a complete watch in here somewhere too another tray of watches renown that's a nice looking one Chronograph Swiss, it's probably got gutted. These usually had solid 18 karat gold cases. 
too bad. Oh, there's so much stuff in here, it's hard to go through. I see backs from Eterna. Um, this is a nice, act complete, other than the, the little push buttons on the side there, that's a Galet chronograph. Um, this is a Royal Canadian Air Force pilot's watch from World War II, and it's all there. It's just, you know, the movements out of the case. So that's why I'm just kind of going through and you know, you hope you find something that's gonna be like over the top cool, um, something valuable, something rare. Um, oh, Rolex uh, Oyster Perpetual Date. It's a, off a Yacht Master. Well, if that's real, that'll help pay for the whole lot right there. It's fun going through all these little tins and boxes, even though they're not in the greatest shape. Um, there can be real treasure in here. Wittenauer, electronic, 1968. Well, it could be gold case. Let's check on that. Some little ladies watches. Oh look, Omega. And that's a black dial. Not in the greatest shape, obviously, but it's real. It's a nice early Omega. Original case, keep that together. See Seikos and Bolivas, the occasional high-end watch kind of mixed in here, and that's really what I'm looking for, is the uh, slightly better stuff. Oh, there's a Tudor, that's made by Rolex. That's a Tudor movement right there. All it takes is uh, the right parts. So there's some more Bulova parts, some old Accutrons and Space View parts. Boy, there's a Tissot Viso date that was slightly higher end. calendar watch look at all this stuff well time to pull out the good stuff remember these it's a bull of a digital watch it's not working right now but this would have sat on your wrist so you could see the time while you're driving huh so there's actual full watches in here Let's see. <laughs> no way no way well you know, I'm not getting too excited because a lot of times these are replica, but if this is real, this is a really, really good watch. Uh, and it's working too. It is manual. Well, what else is in here? Some Bradley watches. And yeah, so the Mickey Mouse watch, we've got the watch in here. There's another one. There's the Bradley Star Wars Darth Vader watch. I see another case with Bradley in it too. Another Mickey Mouse watch. Well, there's good collectors for that stuff, but that Star Wars, the Darth Vader one's probably gonna have um, a little bit more value. Neato Mosquito. Seiko. Okay, I see Rolex. I'm gonna say that's an authentic Rolex band. It looks good. Yeah, it's numbered, it's got the right kind of weight. There's bracelet bits. And there's the case for it, 1600. I think that's like a date just or something. There's gold. Gold case pocket watches, a whole bunch of them. Not that I'd want to melt them down, but I mean, heck, <laughs> I mean, even just the gold weight is probably pretty good. Gold's recently gone up too. Wow, look at this, more pocket watches. Tons of stuff. Let's see what's in this box. A pile of watches. Well, at least watch parts anyway. Guess I gotta do what I gotta do. Go through and see if there's anything worth uh, worth keeping out and saving. There's a nice little Waltham right there. I think it was price $150. Don't even know if it still works or not. Give it a little look at later on. Look at all these ladies watches in here. Cocktail watches, so they call these smaller ones. Okay, definitely gotta go through this. That's a crazy pile of watches. I'm gonna go through this kind of unceremoniously and look for anything that might have value. And sometimes even the smallest part or piece, oops, like this bezel, could be off of something good. Might be worth hanging on to. So I'm gonna put my mystery, somewhat good parts over here and uh, go through and see what I have for good watches. Stuck. 
lots of screws and stems, crowns. Whoa, what do we have here? Looks like some fancy accessories, maybe some costume jewelry, some crosses, oh, all kinds of neat stuff. I've sorted through pretty much all the stuff I want to keep. I'm gonna have to do a thorough sort through it after, which I'll do on camera. But I've got a friend coming by who repairs watches and he's interested in whatever I don't want. So I have a car full of stuff I'm hoping to sell tonight and get my money back within 24 hours on this deal. Fingers crossed, let's hope this happens. While I was there, I also picked up this awesome flight jacket and a random airplane propeller because it's super cool and a tuba, cause you know, why not? I've been sorting for quite literally hours and going through all these little parts bins and trying to figure out what's salvageable and what's not and what's pretty much ready to go. And here are some of the better finds that I've had. Um, most of these watches are complete or very close to it. There's a nice 1950s Omega. There's an Omega uh, Automatic, a Seamaster 120 with the case. It looks like it just needs a little TLC. Most of these, um, even, they're, even though they're rare, are going to need some work. Um, there's a Tudor made by Rolex. It looks like it's been dismantled. Well, not. it looks like it has been. A Royal Canadian Air Force watch from World War II. Uh, Tissot that looks like it's got a um, newer or better face for it. And apparently it works just fine. It um, just has a you know really gross looking dial on it. A uh, nice little chronograph, some modern watches that, uh, you know, may have some decent resale value. And then we get into uh, a couple of the nice pieces, which, uh, where did I put them? Oh, right there. Skipped right over it. That is a 1950s Rolex Explorer. That's probably one of the better finds that I got out of this deal. And I went through um, tons of these little crowns. Um, to find, well, you might say like, why'd you go through all like tons of this stuff looking? Well, I was looking for all these little ones. These are Omega and Rolex crowns. They can be worth between 20 and over a hundred dollars each. When you start adding that up, um, that's pretty darn good. And this box was in uh, the garbage. Um, the customer had a bag of garbage they were gonna throw out. And these are all brand new Omega crowns. Those are worth probably about 40 to $60 each. So you times that by a hundred, that starts adding up pretty quick. The other cool things I found, uh, well, a whole bunch of Rolex parts. So some original uh, faces, a Rolex 1600 date just case. There's some uh, bracelet bits and pieces that people would buy. The Patek Philippe, sadly, I feel that that's um, not authentic, but it is working. So if a person just wants to wear a watch that looks like a Patek Philippe, well, there's one there. Um, there were a couple mint condition Bradley Darth Vader watches. Those are worth a couple hundred dollars each on their own. Uh, and then of course the Mickey Mouse watches. So really, really good collection of stuff. And I have lots of parts and pieces that I can still bring back to the shop and use. Uh, found a couple that were working though too. A nice little uh, Cartier tank watch and a beautiful little Sultana chronograph. Both um, pretty much ready to go. Just have to put a new band on that one, but they're both working properly. Clean up nice. So at the end of the day, how did we fare? Well, I bought everything for $2,000. By the end of the day, I had sold the remainder of the product for $1,500, leaving uh, the balance due $500. That's what I paid for all this stuff. And I ended up with uh, Rolex, uh, several Rolexes actually. Um, there was movements, but complete watches, many Omegas. And I've taken all those watches, uh, 14 of them total, into my watchmaker to see if they can piece them back together and get them working properly. Plus, I have an entire box full of watches that are already functioning. Um, and then you add in the coat, the propeller. Thankfully, it ended up working out well. This will be one of those deals that uh, even with an investment of having to fix the watches should work out pretty good for us. So all in, um, I think it's gonna be a pretty good score. And um, yeah, glad you guys came along for the journey and for the adventure. So stay tuned uh, to our Instagram if you wanna see pictures of these watches as I get them fixed up and put them up for sale. If you're a watch collector, you can definitely reach out to us at the store and see what I have on hand, literally. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys all soon and thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.